Hello, I'm Carl Cal. Welcome to the channel. This is the second part of the RetroArch guide in using PS1 games on your PC. So you can have a look at the graphical settings so that we can improve the actual picture because this is what happened when I first booted up the core. So we just go through how to avoid this and then we'll go through all the settings that I've got on my system so, to make it look like no, oh, it's not 4K quality, but it's a great improvement on what it was. Let's just go through how to make a shortcut first. There's no response. So all we need to do is just uh, highlight the file, right click, and then select send to, and then press create shortcut on the desktop. So it's put a little shortcut on the desktop, and then we can put that wherever we want. And then to run it, we don't need this one open now. We just double click on there, and that's RetroArg booted into. Let's get rid of this ribbon band that's displaying in the middle of the screen like a wavy line using resources that we can use elsewhere. So we go over to settings and then go down to user interface, uh, appearance, and then if we go down to pipeline and if we just click left, it's going to turn it off altogether. If you click right, it puts it back on, and then we've got all different settings that you can use. You can th scroll through them all if you want. If you've got it on, just, just go one left, and then I'll turn it off completely. This theme I've gone through for is electric blue. I think it starts as, as static. And then what we need to do is go to drivers, and then make sure the video is off this GL core, and he's on Vulkan. Okay. Then we'll go back back here and then configuration file save current configuration okay and then we'll go back and back and back and then we'll go over to Dino Crisis 2 because to see the settings that we've set up for Dino Crisis 2 you need to actually run the game so if you click onto it click run it's loaded now and if we just press start and select the two button combination that we've set up to get back to the Retri art menu then we can have a look at the options that we've got so we've got options here and then this is all the different settings that we've got for Dino Crisis 2 so the hardware always make sure that's set to Vulcan for this one otherwise you'll get those funny squiggly lines or flashy boxes instead of the actual graphics like we did at the beginning of the video so I'll just go through all the different options that we've got here we're not going to go through every single one because if you can see this under renderer the scrolling text actually tells you what all the different options are and what they do so what I did is one by one just turned them on or increase them if there's an option there to do that and then kept going into the game and see what options and what performance upgrades it gave to the actual game and then just carry on down and then just keep doing different options and then at the end of the day you get like a decent improved graphical image on screen so this one I've turned on I put times four on this one as I say I'm not going to go through everything with you because it's going to be another long video if you just read all the scrolling text here does explain what what the actual options are so texture filter and put that on XBR turn that on that's off times that by 8 that's on that's off that's on memory only this one is on this one's on frames per second you can put that on screen if you want to see what your performance is like but I've just left it off standards default that one's off that's disabled, that's full, 1 to 8 which is the default, that's on 100%. If you've got a game that's struggling a little bit then you can put this up up a bit if you want to. Obviously the more you put it up the more stress it has on your CPU and the more chance of it being unstable running. But if it is running slow you can, you can boost it up a bit and then see whether it's stable and then boost it up a little bit more if you still need it. And then that's what I suggest you do, just play around with the settings. Each game is going to be individually different. Some of the 3D games are going to benefit from similar settings. 
but just go through and see see what suits the game and see yeah whether you can get away with some of the things this bit here for skip bios if you're on pal version games like dino crisis 2 was then don't don't skip it because then this can have problems with the compatibility so leave the bios on for that and we can try turning it off but if you have problems booting then obviously turn it back on all right Progressive rate, force 4B3, I haven't put that on, that's on, that's on, and I think synchronous, I'll just did play with that one, so that's on synchronous. The loading speed for your CDs, you can boost that if you want things to go a little bit quicker. If you've actually got a CD that you're playing from, rather than downloading or dumping the file, you might benefit from having this on a faster setting because it's quite slow. But if you're just running the normal game from your hard drive, then leave this at times two because it can have problems. It's on the retro, that's on. These are off. That's on. That them are off. I've just got a light gun. And that's all the settings that I've got. Keep playing around with them and see whether you can improve it. Try to look online, see whether there's any configuration files for the best performance per computer. But as I said here, per computer, yours is different from mine. It's got a different graphics card. So your settings are going to be slightly different from what mine, mine is. And also, if you've got a different monitor, you can have different options again. So keep playing. So we've got Dino Crisis 1 running on here. To add the different file format, you see you just highlight the PlayStation, right click here and then add entry and what you do is fill the boxes in again. You see I've done it here for Dino Crisis, so I've got that one, so what I'll do is I'll right click on here and then edit and just show you the path what you've got to do. So just name the file as it is and then put the path of where the actual game is, which in my case was on the G. That's where I stored my games, and this is the Dino Crisis, and it's the PBP file. And then either double click or open, and then select the core, which is the Beatle one, and then the actual playlist, which is a Sony one, and then press OK. So, what I do on here is just right click on here and then see whether they can download a thumbnail. No, nope, nothing's coming in. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll go edit, what we'll do is we'll put, in brackets we'll put Europe, and then press OK, and there we go, thumbnails already just populated. So what we'll do here is we will close this one here, we'll quit RetroArch, and then we'll reopen RetroArch. And it will load all those details in and then scroll across and then we've got Dino Crisis Europe. And then we just press run on here. And there we go. All loaded in. So as you can tell I'm a bit of a Dino Crisis fan and also obviously the Resident Evil. But that's what it was with their PlayStation and things, and Parasite Eve as well and all different kinds of games. I'm going to select a new game here. You have mail. The second report from military experiment facility. I'll just skip through that. This is PBP file format and it's a lot smaller than the normal files. It's more compressed. So if you wanted to change your other file formats to this, there's a, there's a program out there that you can get. It is listed on the um, instructions on the emulator, the RetroArch one. It's named there, but I can't see any links for it, so I had to look that one up. So just gonna skip through here. This is the first checkpoint. Playtime is officially over, kiddies. Something's wrong. The lights in the guardhouse are out. So if we press our two keys here and then see whether we can do anything here. So we've got options here, Vulcan, I 
All oh, right, okay, so let's pick that up for the original Dino Crisis 2 that I installed. So what we'll do is we'll try a shader. The shader's on. So we'll go load a shader. We'll go... Oh, we'll try that one. Let's pick one up. Go apply. Changed it slightly, slightly improved it a little bit. Still looks a bit blocky though for me, so what I'm going to do is have a look at this other emulator that a friend suggested. I'm going to have a play around with this one and see whether I can improve the, the graphics or performance of this one as well. So if you've got any advice or you want any help or anything, leave some comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am going to try PlayStation 1 games with a different emulator in the next video. If you have got any suggestions for good PS1 games to try out, leave comments below as well. Appreciate the help and let's help each other. My name is Cal, have a good morning, afternoon or good evening. Farewell till next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Let me guess, this is some of your handiwork, right?